President Trump holding an event this week in one of the state's hardest hit by coronavirus in recent weeks, the state of Arizona. Some attendees wore masks, but not many, as the president returns to the campaign trail now in the midst of this pandemic. Meantime, one of the venues set to host a presidential debate later this year is backed out. The University of Michigan withdrawing as a host due to coronavirus concerns. Miami has now been chosen as the backup. The first presidential debate is scheduled to be here in Indiana in late September in South Bend, where city leaders and organizers say they're keeping their plans to host that first debate, even if that means limiting the number of people who can attend. We don't think that there'll be 900 now in, in Notre Dame or the other facilities, but uh, just because of the social distancing that we're sure our medical uh, authorities that, that we are retaining. The first debate is scheduled for September 29th at Notre Dame. Meantime, the latest polling numbers showing the gap widening between President Trump and former VP Joe Biden, who now holds a 10-point lead when you average all of the recent polls. In some national polls, he's ahead by as many as 14 points. Let's bring in our panel right now as we talk about the coronavirus and this election year. Joining us this week, Pete Seat, Jennifer Wagner, Abdul Hakim Shabazz, and Adam Wren. Let's start with former Indiana GOP Communications Director Pete Seat. Pete, what do you make of those numbers in the midst of this pandemic and the protests we've seen in recent weeks? What, what does that tell you about this race for president? Well, we can neither dismiss the polls nor put too much stock into them. And I really emphasize that first point to my Republican friends who are quick to dismiss polls, considering Hillary Clinton was leading in many battleground states and nationally the day before the election in 2016. I think we'd be smart to pay attention to these, to look at some of the erosion on the part of evangelicals especially, and do what those of us who have run campaigns on this panel and worked on campaigns before have done, and that's always run your race like you're 10 points behind. That's how you win. You cannot just sit there and dismiss them and think that you're doing well because Twitter tells you or crowd sizes tell you and really focus on making strategic decisions to get the job done. All right, let's turn now to former communications director for the Indiana Democrats, Jennifer Wagner. Jennifer, hello. Uh, your thoughts on these uh, polling numbers and these new concerns about coronavirus? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I agree with what Pete said. you got to run like you're 10 points behind, but it sure is looking like the president is 10 or more points behind. I think one of the interesting things in the, in the polling numbers that came out in this past week is that he is definitely underperforming in a lot of key areas. And I think people are rightly critical of his response to coronavirus, to Black Lives Matter. But there is still a, um, a, a group of folks who believe that he is doing the right thing with the economy. And not to go back to that, it's the economy stupid talking point. But if that, if he can hold those people who think he's done a decent job there, I think he still has a chance. That said, right now, Joe Biden's looking pretty good. All right, up next, let's bring in Abdul Hakim Shabazz, the editor and publisher of IndiePolitics.org. Abdul, how will this race for president impact uh, the race down ballot here in Indiana? Uh, well, uh, looking at Indiana, and there has been a whole lot of polling in Indiana. We did some uh, Indy politics back in April, and uh, Donald Trump was still ahead by about 10 or 12 points in, uh, over Joe Biden. We plan to do some more uh, in October, so we'll see if those numbers have changed. Um, but looking at that, I don't see it affecting too much. I see uh, Donald Trump still doing relatively well here in Indiana. I see that carrying down the ticket even into the attorney general's race, and even Curtis Hill, Curtis Hill is the nominee. I don't see somebody voting for Donald Trump. Eric Holcomb, and then Jonathan Weinzapple, and then going back to being a Republican. All right, finally, Importantville's Adam Wren. Adam, your thoughts on the race for president and the potential impact here? Yes, I think, uh, you know, I agree with the panel. I think the race is certainly trending towards former Vice President Joe Biden. Um, you know, I'd push back a little bit. Um, you know, I do think down ballot, particularly in a place like the 5th District, uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, you saw Senator Joe Donnelly went in a place like Carmel. I think it's becoming increasingly blue. And I, you know, I think Joe Biden could could win in suburbs uh, ringing Indianapolis. Uh, let's also talk about some of the other news this past week. Uh, first, uh, John Bolton news. Pete, you worked in the Bush administration. What about the impact of Bolton's book this week? W will that make a difference amongst Republicans? It's incredible how you can like the messenger when you like their message. Uh, it wasn't all that long ago that John Bolton was nothing more than a warmonger who wanted to annihilate Iran off the face of the earth, and now he is the savior of the nation. So I think the broader question is we need to have a debate about credibility in this country and whether or not someone like John Bolton is credible. I'm sure there are some 
things in there that are that are entirely credible and that he witnessed. But just because he is out there attacking President Trump does not necessarily make him a credible individual after he had not been in the eyes of the media and so many Democrats for years and years. Uh, Abdul, let's uh, change gears here and talk about something local locally. Really, it's a, it's not just local. It's a national conversation about police reform. Uh, but we're also hearing a lot locally about the politics of policing here in Indianapolis this week and a lot of questions for Mayor Hogsett. Uh, yes, uh, and a story that you guys did uh, at Fox 59 uh, raises some major questions about the mayor's performance uh, after the riots. Uh, the same uh, talk that Deputy Mayor uh, David Hampton had uh, stopped IMPD from, from going in. Uh, no, there are, there are a lot of questions. Uh, we got damages in the downtown area. Uh, no, they're like, like I said, there are a lot of questions about Mayor Hogsett's performance uh, during this crisis right now. Uh, Jennifer, your, your thoughts as that conversation continues really on, on two separate topics, to, uh, on police reform, but also on some of the politics of policing here in Indy. Sure. I think um, I, I would be remiss as the Democrat on the panel today to not give some credit to Republican Senator Mike Braun for trying to push forward the debate on qualified immunity um, really kind of stuck his neck out in the Republican Party this week in, in Washington. Um, but I think here locally, and I say here locally, I'm reporting live from Working Florida on today. Vacation. But yeah, right. Yes, but uh, <laughs> but back in Indianapolis, we have to have a serious conversation. Um, obviously, you've got non. Uh, violent crime that's down 10%, but the homicide rate is now up 50% for the first half of the year. And you've got attacks happening in downtown Indianapolis. The, the story of uh, the joggers along the, the trail getting attacked, I mean, those are, those are terrifying things. And I think the mayor needs to, to address that. Uh, Jennifer, thanks. Uh, safe travels to you. Adam, uh, your, your thoughts uh, on this past week? What else stood out to you in a, in a wild week in the news? Yeah, you know, I would echo uh, Jennifer uh, 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 in regards to Senator Mike Braun, um, you know, on a number of issues, whether it's climate change or where qualified immunity, he really has shown somewhat of an independent streak, uh, you know, even the, as he continues, continues to vote uh, with the president most of the time. But he's picked his spots uh, where he, he has thought he can kind of move his party forward. Um, which I, I think for many people who watched the Senate, Senate race, particularly the primary in 2018, you know, would look back and find that surprising. So, um, you know, good for him for uh, being an advocate within his own party and, and in the larger national conversation. Uh, looking at Mayor Hogsett, this is someone who potentially has, uh, you know, gubernatorial aspirations in perhaps 2024. And uh, it's been a very difficult month for him, um, you know, as you, as you look at how he has been... Um, you know, talked about by some in the black community here in Indianapolis, as you look at some of the national headlines Indianapolis has made uh, with police brutality, uh, it hasn't been an easy uh, term for him as after his reelection last year. All right, Adam, Abdul, Pete, Jennifer, thank you all so much. We appreciate it. Coming up next this Sunday in Focus, we're talking about the economic impact of COVID-19 in Kokomo, where they've seen the highest unemployment rate in the entire state. We'll talk with their mayor coming up next.